Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Hey everybody! This time on Jairus of All. This I, time on Jairus of All. This time on Jairus of All. I'm going to steam off in cosplay. I'm trying to think what I was going to say. I will be helping Jairus build a super cool cloud cosplay. To test the buster sword that I made. In one day with what we have. That is so good! This episode of Jairus of All. I get so excited about polishing this six foot turd. Forget about filming. Ghosty Muffin Cosplay helps Jairus of all. And I completely finished my Buster Sword. Jess and I have been friends for a while now. She's a cosplayer on Instagram, goes Ghosty Muffin Cosplay. And she's a real cosplayer. She makes all of the stuff herself. She doesn't commission people to do it. And she's a good one. Which is why I asked her if she would help me make costumes for some of my builds. I asked her about Cloud and she said yes. So we made Cloud costume. All right. Do you want to start and then I'll go? Yeah. Okay. Ghosty Mustin. No. <laughs> We're off Ghosty to Mustin. The first step in me designing a costume is to draw it out so that I have a good feel for it and then I can take measurements and then put them on the drawings. Hey, now we're set. Should I put my arms down now? Uh, just kind of have them over, I guess. I don't like cake at all. I don't. I'm serious. I just eyeball this stuff when I make things. Yeah. Probably saves time. Here is the issue with it. I, you see I have all of these measurements, right? I take the most beautiful measurements and then I don't set them. It's always actually good to adapt, so, you know. We should start with, I want to start the shoulder. That's what I'm excited for. I dug out. Bolts, speaking bolts. of the shoulder. I save everything, the ring gear on the differential in my car and I save the bolts from it. They're gonna be on the wrist. Lawnmower that I took apart be on forearm section. This is from motorcycle that I took apart. It will be on the shoulder pauldron, whichever side it's on. Yeah. So I'm going to trace what I want the front of this pauldron to look like, and then this is going to become our template. I hope I'm not messing up any of the names underneath. Contact cement is good because it has a really strong hold. Apply it to both surfaces and give it a little bit of time to cure and dry. Stick it together and make sure the front lines up. We're gonna touch it up a little bit with a heat gun, maybe sand it down some, maybe cut off some edges to make sure it fits Jairus very nicely, but here we are. We trimmed off the excess stuff so that it fits a little bit better and reshaped it. I did notice in the picture there's a small lip that sticks out. So I'm going to use spray adhesive because this Super 77 is more than strong enough to keep this little part on there. 30 seconds. Fortunately, the time it took to read that, it cured. <laughs> yeah. His shoulder has a lot of different battle damage on it, so I'm going to try and recreate that in two different ways. Time. Yep. Doesn't look as repetitive. All right, cool. The wrist pieces. All right, we have that. One in the middle for a second thickness. It's gonna be this five millimeter, and then I'm thinking for the thinnest right there, we'll use some thin craft foam. We'll have all three layers like a triple decker cake. I temporarily taped this together just to check to see if the measurements worked. Does the one that goes up here on my arm fit? I like to eyeball it. That's perfect. Okay. It's <laughs> the sound of Patreons underneath my knife. Let's see who you cut. Cameron. Play ASMR brush scratching sound. There it is. <laughs> the sticking of it. So it's not gonna line up and that's okay. It was kind of made to trim. I think this is the most satisfying part. Screw your soap cutting videos. I would rather watch foam get stuck together with contact cement. Bam! Triple layers. You're gonna be the cloudiest cloud ever. This is gonna add a little bit of extra strength between these two layers. All right. We're gonna see how pretty it looks. So we'll just snip that little chunk of red right there. And right about then is when her state called and said, hey. By the laws of Earth-19. You have to stay at home now. Rona, right? But if by some miracle I find the time, I'm gonna try to finish it before 
I do the test video. On to the sword build, which was kind of a nightmare, but totally worth it in the end. In the last build video, I said, and some of this uh, material on the outside here might need removed because it is far too proud. And it would probably make me sand through the carbon fiber to remove the carbon fiber from the blade edge whenever I sanded it back. And I forgot to remove that material. I was right. It was thin enough I could see through the carbon fiber, which meant that it was thin enough that it had no strength, so I knew I had to grind it out and reinforce it. You know those weird shaped grinder bits that come with your Dremel that nobody ever uses? This little grinder stone works perfect for undercutting the carbon fiber so that when I put the reinforcement in, it actually holds onto both sides of what's already on the sword. Now that section where the carbon fiber gets thin will be cut like this and when I fill it with filler material it'll grab onto the top and the bottom and it'll be wedged tight. I just mix the chopped carbon fiber into epoxy to fill that void. They say it's as strong as aluminum so <laughs> fingers crossed. Really I ground that one section and then I filled that and then I sanded back and when I sanded back I saw the thin section was bigger so I ground that out and I did that like five times and then I realized I just needed to grind that whole section and fill it which is what I just did. I'll say it again, epoxy doesn't dry, it sets up. Exothermic reaction, you add heat, it occurs faster. It is possible for epoxy to get too hot, but in this case, that's not gonna happen, so. It's time to polish the whole turd. But as far as turds go, it is a very strong turd. I should mention that I'm not actually sanding this back to completely flat, like leveling slightly and scuffing. In order to skim coat it to make it look really nice, I need to have the whole thing abraded so that the next layer of epoxy will adhere really well. And Scotch Bright does a great job of getting down into the areas that are hard to reach with sandpaper to scuff those up. That way I get excellent adhesion for the next layer of epoxy. Because this thing is a turd and I'm polishing it. A little bit of water. God, this thing is so sharp. Constantly have to remind myself to avoid that edge there. Oh, see, I went through the top layer just ever so slightly. It's got five layers though on each side, so it doesn't matter. That looks way better than it did before with all the bumps all over the finish and the epoxy will make this look better than it does now. The amount of strength that I just diminished by sanding back this layer should not be enough to affect the functionality of this sword. Mm. It's gonna look so good. Oh, see, I did touch it. I touched it, that's all it takes. I couldn't even feel it. You see that? You see the blood? It's so sharp. If I bump this edge, <laughs> I should not have sharpened it that early. Because now I'm bleeding on stuff and getting cut. <laughs> this thing's a problem. I mean, at least it doesn't hurt. I didn't even know it happened. I wonder if I put my blood from this little cut where the material slots go. If it gives the sword more power. <laughs> Fairly certain that I need 120 grams of epoxy to be able to coat this side efficiently. Not sure if I have enough. I'm gonna get close to 80, which I am. 78, all right, I'm getting there. <laughs> I, I was almost certain I wouldn't have enough. 78, 79, all right, 79 grams. Weight ratio on this, according to the amount that is in the bottle is 0.42. So I need 33 hardener. I hope there's enough hardener in here. Holy cow. 32. 33. 
Bingo. The heater's on. That's why there's noise in the background because it's got to be hot to get this stuff to set up in a reasonable amount of time. So this thing has been going almost nonstop. Time to mix. I need to use epoxy resin. I can't get epoxy resin because you will never go back to Earth 19. Go 19! Go 19! This is the only epoxy resin that I have access to that sets up faster than between 24 and 48 hours, at least a full day before it's fully cured. It all depends on the temperature. I want this to be thoroughly mixed before I start throwing it on. That way it doesn't get wet spots in it. I also need to balance it because XTC 3D goes off real quick. It's my life depends a lot on how warm it is currently. It's already warm. And if I let this sit in here too long, it will go off and it'll get hard in the cup and then I'll be screwed and I won't have any quick setting epoxy to try to coat this blade with because this is gonna make the turd not a turd. And I need time to be able to spread it and hit it with a heat gun also. I gotta move. If this sets up fast enough that I can start working on the other side, then I can get coats on both sides, let it sit for the night, and by tomorrow, I should be able to work on the rest of it. I'm fighting the clock. This side looks so good. I need to let this lay flat, cure the way it is, and not mess with it. Basically, it'll look like that when it's finished. The whole thing will. Don't, you, don't milkify. Oh, I think I might have just milkified that spot. I think I got it too hot and I milkified it. You get it too hot, the epoxy goes off super quick. It turns milky white. This is the garbage side of the blade anyway. This, the dips from the uh, core foam having soft spots. And then it also was the side, the thin spot next to the blade edge on the top of it. Whatever. There'll be a good side and a bad side apparently. Looks like somebody put milk in my carbon fiber. Milky. Milky. Milky never done this before so I guess I can't beat myself up too much. It's very late slash early in the morning and I need to get the second layer on this and I need to do that before I go to sleep so that whenever I get up I can work on it. That's not gonna happen. So this needs to set as fast as it possibly can so that I can start doing the other side with slow epoxy because I'm out of the stuff that's quick. There's no way for me to get more of it because everything is closed. Do you remember 19? I think it seems to be cured almost entirely. If I touch it for a long time, I can leave a little bit of fingerprints on it, but it is going to get sanded back. So that doesn't matter that much. It's after five o'clock in the morning. I need more hands. There we go. This has to be cured tomorrow. Has to be. Oh, you think so, huh, Morty? Don't have a choice. I need about. 82 will do. Oh, that was way off. I need to put some of this in now. 10. Yeah. Call that good. The recommendation for this resin is to mix for five minutes because it has such a ridiculously slow setup time. About an hour or so work time with the temperature that it is in here right now. So I'm intentionally putting the thin stuff on the better side because I feel like it has less ability to bridge screw ups. Probably going to lay out far thinner. Wow, I made way too much. I am showing you that pattern. Oh yeah. Heat gun to remove the bubbles and then bedtime. This took an outrageous amount of time to cure. I ended up having to use a heat gun on it and run the heater in the garage for like eight hours to get this thing cured. But it's cured now, which means more sanding. Looks really cool now. Almost there. As with everything I do, that took a lot longer than I thought it would. <laughs> 
So water wets out the scratches and allows you to see what it'll look like once you hit it with clear coat. I'm going to wet sand it just ever so lightly, but I've got awesome paint to put on this to make it the way I want it to look. Hmm. Wet sanding is a lot of work, but it is extremely satisfying. Your sandpaper doesn't clog, and it's far more effective than when it's dry on stuff like this. I could wet sand this back to the point that it's basically shiny, and that would be wonderful, but this stuff is susceptible to damage from UV rays and uh, wouldn't last very long that way. There was a lot of material to remove because I put such a thick layer of epoxy on this, so 80, the whole way up to 400. And now 600 wet sand. This is probably massive overkill, but it's probably gonna look good. I really hope it's gonna look good. Nothing like wasted effort. Pro tip, old socks. Make great gloves to wipe stuff like this down. You don't wanna to touch it with your bare hands and you can just spin them around for a fresh area. Obviously they're washed. I sure hope the clear coat covers all this up. <laughs> Unfortunately, now that it's very clean and dry, I can see the issues that are caused that I didn't get sanded out the whole way, so I have to do more sanding and wipe it all down again. It is well after three in the morning, and I really need to get a new set of clothes because I'm covered in the dust from this stuff, so I'll see you tomorrow. Painting time. It's all wet sanded, and the finish is perfect, and it's clean. But I have a pro tip for you. You can't see where I touched it, but the paint is going to have a difficult time laying and sticking, but there is a way that you can tell. There it is. And then in spots that are still oily, you wipe it and the water rolls away from that area. That's how you know you're not done yet, but reclean it and bam, water break free. It's extremely important for getting a good paint job. I didn't need to tape off the handle, but the strap that I made out of duct tape is so sticky, it would have been really difficult to get it all off of it afterwards. Here we go. This is two-part automotive clear coat. It'll give me the protection that's necessary for this thing to not degrade over time from any type of UV light, like this stuff in the sun. I'm testing my spray pattern right now to make sure it's good before I start shooting the sword. I thought you so long. That scared me. take for the sword to be ready. It's cured enough now that I can get tape on it. It's been a day waiting for that to go, but I've also been dealing with prints, which is what has made this entire project take so unbelievably long. I think it's pretty obvious in those last couple shots, the audio was destroyed. I bumped my mic at some point, changed one of the settings, never realized it, ruined the audio for almost the rest of the video, and I was about to explain how the 3D printing aspect of this project was the thing that made it take forever. So I'll just do that right now, really quick. The first two prints went fine, the collet and the top part of the guard. For some reason, the third print, the bottom part of the guard, started screwing up, and it didn't stop after that. So I started troubleshooting and set all of my print settings to the safest possible settings to eliminate those as options for why this thing was getting a failure to feed. I checked online to see if there were any tips or tricks that I didn't know about, and all of the settings that I found mine were at or better than those, and the only other thing they recommended was to have a guide tube, which I did have. And I knew it wasn't heat creep where the heat goes up the filament, and I knew it wasn't a clogged nozzle, because I had diagnosed those earlier, and I knew that was not the issue. So I thought maybe it was because the spool that I got was a three-kilogram spool, and it was so heavy, there was so much resistance that it was keeping the filament from feeding. So I built a ball bearing roller system, which gave it too little resistance. And and then I had to build a resistance system for it. And after I knew that that could not be the issue anymore, I was kind of at wit's end because I could not figure out what was wrong with it. 
hot garbage. But one time when I pulled the filament out, I could see that the little hobbed bolt was struggling to push the filament through for a while, which should be clogged nozzle, but I checked that and it wasn't a clogged nozzle. And by chance, I pulled on the filament coming out of the guide tube and realized that there was an insane amount of resistance in my guide tube. It was like the guide tube had turned into a Brembo disc brake. This is it. What caused me days of problems while I was trying to get everything else accomplished. And as soon as I pulled this thing off, I got perfect prints. So this jar might look like a bucket full of failed prints, but it's a bucket full of lessons learned. Made project take forever, but I learned a lot in the process. That meant I spent more time working with the printer than I had making the designs in CAD to actually print all the stuff out for this thing. I don't know if you know how much fun it is to try to teach yourself CAD software, but it looks something like this. Why does that not look... why is that not centered? going on here? No, that's not right. Position. Why didn't it move there? Why didn't it do that move? Hmm. I have to double click it. Good lord. Ah, this is so irritating. There we go. That took an outrageous amount of time. Why doesn't it just tell me where the point is landing? Why does it do that? This thing is so f stupid. <clears throat> Can I make this hole now? I do have to go the whole way through it. This takes forever. Plus, with me making those files myself, it means I can do what I want, which is to send them out to my Patreon supporters, because these wonderful people that are all over my table are the ones that made this project possible. And if you want to get your hands on the files and be part of my Patreon support group, get your name on the table, have access to extra content, the link is in the description. It's only a dollar a month. Now with having some of the prints finished, I could do the handle wrap, which was the next difficult task. And the reason it's difficult is because I needed epoxy that would set up in a certain amount of time, and I only had really slow set and five minute and 30 minute. And you'd think the 30 minute would have been fine. That's because there was an order to the way I had to do things because of the sizes of the pieces to be accurate to the game. The wrap goes under the collet, and the collet is just larger than the wrap. So I needed to wrap it and then push the collet over the wrap while it was still soft, but that means that I have to have the guard in place. But I had to have the guard epoxy to the blade before I put it on because there'd be no way to get epoxy in there because the tolerances were way too tight. So that meant that I had to wrap the handle with the inner and outer wrap first, then epoxy the guard and the blade, put those together, make sure that stuff was aligned, clamp it in place, then install the collet, and while everything was soft at the end still, I could install the pommel. Because then the pommel would be epoxied onto the actual handle wrap, and save me having to sand it back and put more epoxy on it. Oh no, my SD card died in the... It's gonna set in like no time. This is garbage. I need to move so fast. At least if I can get this on. Come on. This works so well in the dry run. 30 minutes. 30 minutes! The camera has only been running for 20. Not even remotely close. Hello. The only thing I can think is, because this stuff sets so fast, it increased the diameter um, that my wrap was going around and made my section too short to be able to make it. What a joke. 30 minutes set time. Unbelievable. Yeah, you can see it on camera. The sword's so sharp, it put itself through the backdrop just from that little bit of movement. That's way too much. Yes. <laughs> That 30 minute epoxy is completely set. The camera's only been running for 30 minutes. It is not hot in here. It is 65 degrees. Look at the quickness. That's already setting. Oh my goodness. Maybe it's a 30 minute working time if you spread it on top of ice. They must have been conducting their pot life tests in a freezer. Liars. Liars. This is what I was afraid of. Get this lined up where it's supposed to be. Totally destroyed all of this down here. At least that's set where it's supposed to be. Make a nice little fillet. And mold this around the end. Okay. I'm gonna use electrical tape backwards. Not sticky side down. I'm so disappointed in that 30 minute epoxy. It's beyond words. And now to keep the pommel in place. Maybe if this garbage says that it has a 30 minute work time, but it's fully cured in 24 hours, maybe it's actually just five minute epoxy, which is kind of what it seems like it was doing. Not kind of, that's what it did. Waste of money. I had five minute epoxy. If I wanted to screw myself, I could just use that. Obviously my inability to get the right cure time epoxy may have irritated me just a little bit because stores aren't open and I can't get epoxy the cures in the amount of time that I need it to to make this happen.
19. This is the real thing, Rona. Lucky 19. 19. But other than that, there's just a couple points that I'm not gonna make you listen to in horrible audio, so I'll just explain it real quick. Memory card problems. I had to do numerous dry fit-ups to make sure that everything would be aligned because as it was being installed, it would be fixtured in place almost immediately because I was using 5-minute epoxy. If you wanna know how I got such a clean, beautiful edge on the paint that I used for the bevel of the blade, it's frog tape. You put it on, you push down the edge, you wipe it with acetone, or put clear coat on it, it, seals the edge, then you paint, you get a beautiful line. And to make it look like ground metal, I use a combination of 60 and 150 grit sandpaper. I had ordered this new silver paint to do this, which should have looked really good. It never shipped because of all of the crap that's going on, so. I put the material slots in the blade with a diamond hole saw, and I could only find one size and it was too big, but it was all that I had. I trimmed the handle, not because it was the wrong length, but because I didn't trim it in the first place just to make sure that my length overall was exactly correct. And I cut surprisingly easy with a fine tooth blade on a hacksaw. To finish off the blade, I had to have access to both sides of the blade simultaneously, so I made super soft EVA foam soft jaws for my vice to hold the sword and not mess up the finish. One of the goals of this build from the very beginning has been to make it entirely out of carbon fiber composite and a titanium blade edge, with the exception of the foam core. And I accomplished that. PLA infused with carbon fiber, everything else was carbon fiber, and then the handle wrap was the last thing that was an issue because it's supposed to be leather. I used carbon fiber with mahogany mic a powder to make it be brown. The balance of the sword was I also used all of the lead that I had mixed with epoxy and I poured it down into the handle through the materia slot to counterbalance the weight and it made it a good bit better but it's still not great. At least I can use one hand to hold the thing. Anyway, montage time. pounds 14 ounces 2.68 kilograms as of right now this is one big giant awesome looking super lightweight sword <laughs> silly hmm. I know you've kind of already seen it, but we're going to reveal as soon as that sets. Let's find out the final weight. Difficult with the guard on it because it has to hang off of the table, otherwise the guard supports it. Nine pounds, 3.6 ounces, which is 4,185 grams. The goal for this thing was to keep it below 10 pounds. That was the ultimate goal, but I wanted it below eight so that I could add two pounds to the handle. I only had 24 ounces of lead that I could put in the handle though, so what I'd like to do is make a hole in that pommel and put more lead in the handle to get the balance better because that's the balance point right there and that's bad. It should be back here at the materia slots. I feel like this is 100% one of my projects that you have to experience in real life to really grasp how crazy this thing is, especially with how it is. It's so big and it is so sharp. It does weigh more than a normal sword though, even a heavy one. In my next video, I am going to take this thing out and test it. I legitimately want you to tell me what you think I should do with this thing to test it. I'm very tired and I have some ideas, but not a lot of them. Omni Slash is one. I'm going to start working on that video very shortly, so get your ideas in the comments quick. 
And I don't know when that video is going to come out, so, you know, actually go to notifications, make sure you have everything turned on, that way if you do want to see that video when it comes out, you do get notified. And don't forget about Ghosty Muffin Cosplay on Instagram, she's super cool, and I think that's it. Thanks again to my patrons, link in the description. This is dedicated to you. Thanks for watching. It's weird, out in the garage by yourself, talking to yourself being alone, talking to the camera. I mean, it's the camera, technically I'm talking to you, but it doesn't feel like it though. It feels weird. It feels like I'm out here being a weirdo. I'm talking to myself.